Spaceport Arizona, beyond Earth orbit. It's a significant site. It collects our understanding and unifies our effort in where we are as humanity and where we're going. It's a binary system with one part on the ground and one part in outer space. The spaceport is a physical copy of the space station. It is from the spaceport that we launch missions that go beyond Earth orbit. First, let's look at the station in outer space. People live in habitat modules. The rigid frames are constructed and inflated to create a volume the size of a building. Dirt is placed on the outer layer. It protects against cosmic radiation and is used for space farming experiments. But it also grounds our astronauts figuratively and literally. The station rotates and centrifugal force puts their feet in the dirt and feels like gravity. Gravity is important for the health of our long-term residents. The space station is made up of pairs of habitat modules connected by a tether. A five kilometer radius allows for a comfortable 1G centrifugal force. In the center, the microgravity unit does not rotate. It contains important production equipment, such as bioprinters, to create 3D printed human hearts. The station adds modules as it grows, two by two, to maintain the center of mass. And someday, they'll complete the ring to form a space colony. Back on the ground in the Arizona desert, the spaceport is a place to practice for the space station. Teams of people on the ground provide support. The launch of a spaceship is the central organizational feature of the spaceport. It's the center of their lives, so it's the center of the architecture. The launch pad is placed at the center of the circle, defined by a safety radius. Landing pads allow us to deliver the human hearts that were bioprinted in microgravity. The Hyperloop is used for transport. Time is critical to deliver a heart transplant. And rapid unloading can occur by drone, since we've separated the active runway. The Hyperloop is a direct connection to the economy of the region. 20 minutes to Phoenix International Airport, to the Central Business District, and a hospital connection. People access the spaceport from many motivations and backgrounds. The circular form allows access from all directions. Different districts need to store explosives, or shipping containers need high-speed transit, or pedestrians for residential streets. Districts evolve as the economic engine of the spaceport gains momentum. Surrounding the launch pad is a five kilometer radius of solar panels these solar panels work to split water into hydrogen and oxygen and generate the electricity to compress the hydrogen into a liquid state. This scale of infrastructure allows for one launch per month. The site is a physical representation of the energy used by launch and a statement about our social responsibility. For the final steps of the launch ceremony, the pieces are brought in from the outer ring. The rocket was pre-assembled in the VAB and transported to the launch pad. The astronauts suit up at the terminal building and then climb aboard EV tolls to fly out to meet it. As they fly overhead along the central axis, the solar panels will roll up for protection. They recede with ripples and waves, parting like the Red Sea to signal the exodus from Earth. The combination of these typologies is transformative. The environmental feature signals the installation of the most important feature on that rocket. And that's people going to space. A space flight can take several years. We'll use the terminal building for several years of practice 
it's a stationary journey. In addition to the program areas for mission control, there are three types of simulator, flight, fabrication, and hull building. The top of a rocket is the first type, the flight simulator. The next type, the fabrication simulator, is used in the research lab to test new ideas and methods. Both of these occupy bays under the lab. The third type of simulator is the whole building. The terminal building is the same size and shape as the habitat module in outer space. It can be used to simulate the space station. The whole building is a teaching tool. Level 1 is adaptive to different situations. It's big enough to hold a rocket factory, or a garden, or a movie theater, or a town hall meeting. At level 2, prototypes are printed and tested. This prototype is using direct energy deposit in a process that puts material only where it's needed. The frame of the building has been designed with a similar process. It's been optimized for weight. Using 21st century steel with casting made from 3D printed molds, it extends three stories, allowing people to inhabit the structure. And that's unique. Combining long-term residence within the terminal building leads to a unique design. A design that needs places for comfort and rest, as well as connectivity and efficiency. The top three levels are customized for private residential space research labs are below them. These labs are well ventilated with adjacency to the MEP floor and work as light industrial spaces. With some agility, the ideas are applied to different situations, whether it's in space or on the ground. Take furniture assembly, for example. Rockets are optimized for weight and volume, so a system has been developed that packs rolls of fabric pre-cut based on the design. In space, they'll be unrolled, put on a frame, and coated with a hardener to take the shape of a communal table. It's like IKEA for astronauts. Once a month, people bring out that table and gather for a meal. The upper levels are split, but on the lower level, the table is communal. Each researcher, scientist, passing public, and future astronaut comes out of their workspace to celebrate the ceremony of launch. They gather in the center, under the gap. The sides of the building come close, but never touch. The architecture of separation cuts through the building, leaving a hole in the roof like the Pantheon. And the only man-made object that will bridge the gap is the rocket during liftoff.